Hello everyone, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make this organic filigree wirework cabochon and this is what mine looks like. So I've chosen an oval cabochon here but you could really use whatever kind of shape you want to and also the size and then I've captured it with this organic filigree looking pattern all the way along the edge and I've added those beads there to add a bit of colour as well and then we have the bill at the top for whatever chain that we want to use and on the back I captured it like this, so that's also using that same kind of technique. Obviously just not adding the beads to keep it nice and flat. But then we have it pretty seamless from the front to the back part of the frame. So that's what it looks like. So, if you want to learn how to make it, then keep watching. So these are the materials that we're going to need. What I have here is two different gauges of regular round silver coated copper wire that I'm using. The first one is a 0.8mm, this is going to be the base wire. And then here, what I have is a 0.4mm. This is going to be the wrapping wire around the base wire. And then we of course need our cabochon. So what I have here is a 4 by 5 centimeter oval black agate cabochon. That's just what I'm working with. But this technique will really work for any size and shape of cabochon that you want to use. And then finally, I have these 4mm rounds. They're red dyed quartz gemstone beads and they're faceted as well. It's going to add a lovely sparkle to the piece. So let's get all the materials ready and let's get started. So then for the wires that we need to cut, what I have here first of all is the length of my base wire of about one and a half meters. So this is going to be used to make the whole piece that's going to capture the cabochon. And then for the weaving wire here, I have roughly about a meter or so, but it's not really too crucial how long a length you work with. Just really whatever's comfortable because what we're going to have to do with this design is cutting off the length as we're using it and then adding in a new one anyway continuously throughout. And then to begin with here, we need to start working with our base wire. And what I'm going to do is from one end of it, I'm going to go in about 30 centimeters, and that's where I'm going to start working from. So then I just take a pair of chain nose pliers here first of all, I'm going to start working with them. And then I place them onto my wire there, where I want to start from. And then first of all, I'm just going to put a bend in here. Just so I also know that this is the beginning point. And then, really this design is very organic and can be done completely how you want it to be. So just putting that bend in there. So I'm just going to start making a leaf and show you how to do that. So I made my bend here, and I have my pliers in place at that bend. And then this long end is what I'm going to be working with throughout. And obviously we're going to use up more and more of it. Then, I want to just put a bit of a curve into it. And I want this to be quite small as well, so obviously the leaves are going to be really small to fit into the design. So just gently put a curve into it. And then basically this curve that we're doing now is one side of the leaf. Just going to swap hands. Because then right here, you can kind of see we have the curve. What I then want to do is create the very point. So I'm going to go up kind of opposite to where we made the first bend and then I want to take the long end here and bend against my pliers and I swap position as well so we get another angle in there and that's going to be the very point of the leaf just put it in place and then on this side here we also need to make a curve so that means I'm just going to bring this down quite softly and obviously meet up with the bottom of the leaf again but then making sure I get that curve into it if you need to help it along so then we more or less have our leaf shape looks something like that. Now to make the point stand out a bit more then what you can always do is take your pliers there and go on either side of the point and just kind of squeeze and that makes it a little bit more pronounced and that's the very tip of the leaf but then right here on the bottom this long length is meeting up with the very first bend that we did so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my pliers there on the long end about the same place so it's going to be a complete leaf shape and then I want to bend this against my pliers again to kind of finish off the leaf and then we have a wire going out in another direction away from the leaf again to then be ready to make the next part that we're going to do 
and then I'm bringing it all the way around the side of the leaf because next I want to do a circle so I'm just bringing this kind of right down something like this and then to do the circle I'm going to get my six step bail making pliers because what I'm going to use is the smallest one here I just like using these because I know exactly what size loop I'm going to get you can also easily use round nose pliers though so one of the place that step on my pliers where I want that circle to be with the size there and then the long end again I need to bend around you can also move your pliers that can be a bit easier because obviously it's a long length of wire that we're working with and I'm going to bring this all the way around just bringing it down a little bit as well and basically I want to bring it around so it overlaps itself So I'm taking this tail over the top of, you could say, the leaf that I've already done. To get it a complete full circle, I just have to readjust my pliers again. Bring it continuously around. And then it's really up to you when you want to stop and then prepare for the next section that we want to do. I'm just going to keep bringing it around. So right now, then the wires are laying basically on top of each other like that, on the, if you look from the side. I'm just bringing it around like this, just so I have it coming in the direction that I want my next piece to be. So that's more or less like that. So I now have my first leaf, and then there I have my first circle as well. Then up here what I want to do is more just an organic curve. So again I'm going to use my pliers for that just to get it a nice curve. You can also do it freehand, that's completely up to you. And you can swap between the sizes as well, not everything has to be the same size. But then I'm bringing this back in the opposite direction and back towards the circle like that. And then that's kind of the shape in place. You can always adjust the size a little bit, making it a bit smaller there. And then as you go as well, make sure everything is kind of sitting the way you want it to. So there I have my first three initial shapes, and that's pretty much these shapes now I'm going to keep repeating. And now I'm swapping back to my chain nose pliers again because what I then want to do now is another leaf. So I'm just going to show you how to start that off again. Because like I said, otherwise it's pretty much just repeating now. So I'm placing it where I want the leaf to begin somewhere like that and then I push the long end there against my pliers pretty far around so we get a nice angle like that pretty sharp one and then we need to get the curve into this side so just kind of use your fingers and push against it you could also say use the round nose pliers or bail making pliers to get this curve in place it's completely up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with and bring it down there so we're getting towards the tip and it's a pretty small leaf roughly matching the size of the other one that we did like that and then take chain nose again and that's where we then need to make the point so I'm placing it on one side here and then I bend my wire against the pliers to get the point and then I bring the wire down the other side here making sure I get that curve in so I like to kind of grab it a little bit further down the wire it gives it a softer curve and then remember from before if you want to just sharpen that point up a little bit you can move from one side to the other to do that and otherwise it's just adjusting this to kind of make this side match the other one so we have a complete leaf and then when we're happy with it we need to bring it in a little bit more like that then we just need to finish off the leaf by making the wire down here come back out again so I just grab onto 
just before where I want the bend to be with the pliers and then bend the wire there against the pliers just like that. So you can see that gives us that final leaf shape and then we have these nice shapes building with each other and creates this kind of nice organic look to it. So you basically just want to keep doing this. What you also want to do throughout is compare this to the cabochon. So I'm just always having that handy when I'm working with this and making these organic shapes. So what I can do is obviously we're going to kind of start from one place on the cabochon. It might be different depending if you have a different shape. And then what I want is for this to obviously working with the long end, working way all the way around and then fit around the cabochon there. So the other end of this whole piece that we're going to make is going to end up on the other side there. So what you can just do is measure against it here just to make sure you're on the right track size wise and how it looks. But also along the way, obviously we don't have that much yet, but along the way you can kind of then start pressing it against to make sure that this piece also gets the shape of the cabochon. So it shapes around a bit easier. So just kind of press against it like that. But that's just what you want to do as well compared to the cabochon throughout just to make sure you stay on track and it's going to look somewhat even even though it's organic all the way around. So keep making your organic shapes here until it fits all the way around the cabochon and you have that frame in place so it meets up on the other side. So I've now kept going and then this is the length that I've got. So as you can see very organic shapes there and we're just kind of building a length of these organic shapes. And then obviously, like I said, you can measure it as you go against the cabochon because obviously just to see how it sits, but also we want to make sure we do roughly the right length that we need as well to go all the way around the circumference of the cabochon. So it's going to sit a little something like this and you can see give this really nice organic and almost filigree effect along the edge, but also be the part that captures it. So they're going to come together at the top there, the ends of the length that we've just been making, something like that. Now what we can always do is, because obviously what we need to do now is the next step, we can always add a bit more if we find out that it's not quite enough. So don't worry about it being absolutely perfect just yet. We just get a decent length that's going to fit around just like this. So we then need to get a length of the 0.4 mil wire here that we cut ready. And then we need to attach this to our length of the organic shapes here first of all. It doesn't matter what end you attach it to that you start from. It's completely up to you. But I'm just going to start from this side here. And then all I want to do first of all is attach it. So I'm just going to bring it underneath and leave a bit of a tail. And then I'm going to attach it on the end there by just coiling it around a few times. Just so then we can start working further on with it. So I'm literally just coiling it around the base wire. Just so enough there so it's going to stay secure. And what I also just like to do is take some chain nose and kind of squeeze those wraps together. You can always do that later on, but I just like doing it to get it in order. So we still have that little tail there to hold on to, to begin with. And then we can just push this down so obviously where it won't go any further. So now we need to start wrapping along all of this organic wire work that we've done. And obviously each individual shape is going to be a bit different. So I'm going to go through and show you the ones. So we have a circle here, but that's looping double around. Then we have the leaf, another circle, and then just kind of a curved shape, leaf, and then other circles throughout. So what I'm going to do is actually on this one here, I want to add in my first bead as well. So I'm going to just bring the very end of that weaving wire down through that circle, just to help attach it a bit more, first of all. So like that. And then I like to just do that again. Now you can also weave the other way, so where you now basically would be coming up through the circle, it completely doesn't matter and it might change throughout depending where you got to and what part of it that you're wrapping on. But like I said, it completely doesn't matter. So now that I've just wrapped it around there, so this end that we attached isn't going to be moving e anymore either, like up and down that base wire. So I attach that, then I want to add my first bead to that circle there. So I take the bead and I need to add that onto the end of the wire. 
and I then let that drop all the way down the wire because then what it's going to do is sit on top of that circle kind of hide the circle but it's just to add in that bit of colour from the bead and then we need to get to the other side of the circle so in this case here to go straight across I'm going to go to the side and it's basically coming in between the leaf and the circle and just bring the wire with me so pulling it all the way through and it's going to sit just there so now what we need to do is basically more or less fasten it because obviously right now it's just laying across the top of it so to do that I'm going to take my weaving wire and actually come up through the circle so you might just have to move the bead a little bit out of the way to get it up and then just pull it all the way through make sure you avoid any kinks so if you can see one forming make sure to undo it and I like to just hold the bead down while I'm pulling this just to make sure the bead stays where I want it to sit and then we can pull the wire nice and tight here because obviously we don't really want any loose wire showing either if we can help it so something like that and then before moving on just recommend kind of looking at it and making sure you like the way it looks so you can see that bead now sits right on top of that circle I just I'm going to go around that same side one more time because doing two wraps somewhere is always more secure than just the one so I'm just going to come up through again just in the same place and pull it all the way through just like that and now the bead is in there pretty nice and securely because you can't even really move it now so that's that attached and then basically what we're getting to right away is that leaf shape so to do that I then take my weaving wire there and we basically need to start right at the bottom of the leaf so we're going to work from the bottom towards the tip and this is also where we need to keep cutting off the weaving wire so that's why I said don't worry about working with too long a length because we're going to have to keep cutting it off and adding in a new one so I'm just going to bring it down between here wherever you have open space in your piece as long as you're weaving in between things you can always do that to make it a bit easier instead of always having to go to the end of it and come down through you will have to do that but the more you can kind of just bring your wire between things it does make it easier and quicker so right on the bottom there and then I'm going to go straight over to the other side because you kind of want to secure that bottom of the leaf in place first of all also so the shape stays in place come up on the other side and then we need to actually start going down through the leaf now here I'm going to have to go to the end because it's quite a small space so I'm just going to take my wire and bring it down through the leaf again in this case I'm coming down through the leaf in that direction you could be coming up from behind it doesn't matter at all it's the same principle but then the weaving wire there is wrapping around that side of the leaf once so it's coming from the other side and it's basically attached now so it's more secure what I also just want to do is push this down a little bit start right at the bottom something like that then what we need to do is take the end again and come down through the leaf but we need to make sure that the weaving wire is coming around the same side of the leaf so basically we need to wrap this around this side twice so just come down through pull it all the way avoiding any kinks and then pulling it tight make sure to push it all the way down but especially right here at the beginning it can be helpful just to use some pliers as well because you can get in there better than you can with your fingers you might not have enough space so that's twice on that side so now I need to go to the other side so I just bring the weaving wire behind and up on the other side and then push it all the way down there and then we just do the same so take the very end down through the leaf but now because the wire is coming around the other side it's going to be wrapping around there so just all the way down through and then once you've done that make sure to push it down if you need to help with the pliers you can do that to make sure that the wraps here become as nice and tight as possible as well so obviously we do want that look throughout come around that same side again because like I said before always wrapping around each side twice before we then swap to the other side bring this down and push it all the way so that's now that side and you just keep doing this 
So now it's coming out towards the back, I'm swapping to the other side. And like I said, it's the same principle if you're coming from the other direction. You'll just be doing it from the front instead of the back. And then wrap twice on this side again. So what this is now doing is because of this figure of eight weave that we're doing, going from one side to the other side, but remember to do it twice, we're creating this kind of filled in leaf now. So this weave fills in the leaf shape and makes it a bit more leafy as well. So you're gonna keep doing this, but what I will also mention, just need to push this down a bit, is that once you get to the widest part of the leaf, so that will be about right here for me, obviously then what happens is right now we're moving from a narrow point to that wider part. We're gonna then from that midpoint start to move down to a, the point there, which is a narrow point again. Now that's the same principle in the weave, but it's a little bit more difficult. So once I get to that midpoint there, the widest part, I'm just gonna show you how I accommodate for that. So now I'm at that point here. You can see I kind of reached that widest part. Then to accommodate for now it going narrow again, what we need to do is the same weave, but what's gonna happen is because when you weave on base wires here, what the weave wire likes to do is naturally slip towards the narrow point if there is a difference, a gradient there. So I'm just gonna to go to the other side and do my next wrap. So to kind of make sure that that doesn't happen, because obviously it's gonna make a very uneven weave. Before I tighten this now, what I like to do is hold on the other side, the very last wrap I did on that side and push that down. So I'm pushing down on that. And then I'm kind of also pushing down on this wrap that I'm pulling tight on this side. As I'm pulling it, I'm pushing that down as well. And then that makes sure that the both sides there stay nice and tight, pushed together from the beginning instead of them being pulled towards the top. So through again, just avoiding a kink, bring it down and then just push down on both sides to make sure that it stays where I want it to sit instead of pulling up. And you can maybe start to see it soon. Let's go to the other side, same thing, same principle here. Go down through, and then before pulling it all the way, I'm just gonna push down on this side that I just wrapped on, and then also kind of push on the other side there while I'm pulling the wire down. Because then, there you can start to see it that if I just kind of pull in this, it would want to start slipping down towards the point. And obviously that's what we want to avoid. So coming around again, and going through the leaf, and there's also not that much space left, so it's not that many wraps left that we have to do to fill it in. Bring it all the way through, and then make sure to keep it tight by pushing down on the wraps. And you can also just do it after, just make sure you pull it, push it down there. So if anything is out of place, it can settle in. Move to the other side, while you're kind of holding down that side you just wrapped, and just keep doing this until you reach the point of the leaf. Now at the very point, there's gonna be a point where you haven't got any more space to wrap in and out of the leaf. So what we're just gonna do is kind of fill in the edge. So I'm just gonna show you that once I get there. So now I've run out of space for any more wraps within the leaf there. Then, like I said, what we just have left is the very point of the leaf. Now that's bare base wire, so to make sure the kind of doesn't stand out like this, what we're gonna do is wrap across of it. So whatever side you've ended up on, it doesn't matter, just wrap from that side, and then continue to go down through that very point. That's why you just need a little bit of space left right at the tip. Go down through there. So just basically keep coiling around the base wire now, moving from the side you ended up on, to the opposite side, because it's just to make this tip of the leaf blend in so we don't have that bare base wire showing. So just keep doing this all the way to the opposite side, and then there we'll have to finish off the weaving wire. And then to finish it off, what I'm gonna do is bring it back around here, just have a little bit of space left. So just as if I was doing another wrap, but instead of bringing it through, because I haven't got any more space within the leaf now to get the wire through at all, I'm gonna just bring it around as if I was going to, and then on that side there, which in this case is the top, but it could also be the front, depending what direction you're weaving in. I'm just gonna cut off the excess. So the very end of the wire that's gonna be left 
is going to be towards the inside of the leaf. So cut it off at around there. So maybe have just a little millimetre or so, a point sticking out, that you'll be able to feel if you just put your finger over it. And then I'm going to squeeze that down using my chain nose pliers. So make sure I squeeze that. So basically, and just roll it a bit in the direction that the wraps are going. So this end of the wire ends up within the leaf and that tucks it out of the way. So that's how you kind of get rid of that. And obviously, because I have a decent length left, I can just keep using the same weaving wire for the next part that we're going to start out again. So then take that length of the 0.4 mil again, and then we just reattach this. So we're just going to reattach this right after the leaf. So basically just the same way as when we started out. So I'm just going to get in there between. And obviously again, we need to just leave a little short tail to be able to hold on to it. Otherwise, just kind of coil this around that little short length of bare base wire that we have until we then get to that next part which in my case here is another circle so just keep wrapping this around and obviously make sure to push it down so these wraps in the beginning part here it gets as close to the leaf as possible to make sure to cover up as much of the base wire as possible so as you can just keep wrapping in this case still I can bring it between some of my shapes and then pull it tight and then push it all the way down so that's more or less attached now we have the tail there, just get it out of the way so then, like I said, I've reached that little circle there and here I also want to add in another bead because a bit of space as well but in this one I just want to show you how to do it slightly differently in case you're coming up through the circle rather than coming across it like that so I'm just going to bring it up through the circle because I've reached it now so bring it up through, right in the middle and then just all the way as if it's just another wrap just like that and then to add in the bead, I'm going to again grab the next one and put it on the very end of my weaving wire. If I can find the hole, there we go. Let it drop all the way down. So it's going to sit on that circle again. But now, what we need to make sure to do is that it doesn't drop down like this and then we kind of bend the wire. I want to just lift it up a little bit so that when we push this to the side, and bring the other end here down it brings the bead down so the side of the bead sits against on top of the circle because that's what I want because then those holes in the bead obviously where the wire is coming out from are going to be kind of facing out to the side and not really be too obvious instead of them coming straight up and obviously that's going to show more of the wire so I'm just holding on to the bead there and then I'm going straight back down through the circle and just pulling the wire all the way through so basically if I didn't add the bead this wire would just pull straight down through the circle again but because I've added the bead that bead there acts as a stopper so obviously it's just slightly larger and then you can't pull it through so that is also then a way to add in a bead if you're coming from the other direction and obviously we just want it on the other side come around just bring my piece around a bit so it's comfortable to work with and then we can just take the wrapping wire again and come down through on the other side of the bead here just like before to secure it a little bit more in place so there we go went down through the circle again and then it's just a matter of wrapping now until you reach the next point that you need to kind of do something with, whether it's adding a bead or fill the leaf. Now in my case, my case here, I'm just going to continue down this base wire that's then turning into this curved shape before I then turn and reach that next leaf. Now in the process of doing that, what I also just want to do is down here where this curb is close to the beginning part, the other side that we added the bead, I also wanted to do a connection point. So I'm just going to wrap to that point there and then show you how I do that and you want to make sure to do that a little bit throughout here and there just to make the piece a little bit more substantial. So to connect those two parts together there because I've reached that point what I'm going to do is this weaving wire here is coming up through the inside of that curved shape so I'm just going to bring it around as if I was wrapping around again make sure to push it close and then what we need to do to connect it is 
again, I'm just going to grab the very end of it because we need to come now up through the circle in here. And again, you might just have to try and push the bead a little bit out of the way if you need to. So then you can see there, I'm bringing the weaving wire up through that circle. And then just all the way. So basically what this is, is kind of more or less like the leaves, but going in a figure of eight shape here around these two parts, these two base wires, you could say. And pull that nice and tight. So also it brings them together if you need to, but it just makes sure that this now is more stable so I wouldn't be able to pull it apart. And then come around the side again and down. Again, this is just the direction that I'm wrapping in here. It would be the same principle if you go in the opposite direction. And then come up through on the other side again. Like that. So in this case here, I'm just kind of wrapping once on each side. And then if you can, you can always do another wrap. So basically two wraps here for the connection point. You might not always be able to do that. Sometimes one is all you can really fit in, which is fine, it's better than nothing. But whenever you can, try and do it twice. Like here, I'm just coming up again. So it's just going through and doing the exact same movement. Pull it nice and tight and then come around the side to go back to the part that we're actually in the process of wrapping here along this shape. Because what I'm then going to do is just pick up the wraps again. Just undo that coil or kink rather. Like that. On the other side here. Come up, bring it back up. And then all we do now is continue wrapping along this base wire. So we basically just continued wrapping. We just kind of incorporated that connection point into it. And that doing it that way with a figure of eight weave also makes it nice and seamless. So it doesn't really stand out too much. So then here, what we're going to do is I'm just going to keep wrapping, obviously down to where the end of this curve is, and then I meet my next leaf, which I'm then going to fill in the exact same way. And then we'll come around, and up here, I'll probably do another connection point, just after the leaf. Again, same principle. Connect this space wire to then the circle where the bead is on top. Come around, and then on the other side, I'm probably also going to add a bead on the first circle there. Then we have the next circle, you can also still add a bead, or you can just wrap around the circle there. So I'm just going to get to that one, and then I want to just wrap around there, I think. So then for that little circle there, what I'm just going to do is basically follow the shape, because this is more or less just a single circle. So we just have one wire creating the circle, and it's just crossing over right there at the beginning of it. Whereas most of the other ones, especially the ones where I've added the beads all the way along, some of them there you can see that a far way around the circle, you've actually got two wires lying on top of each other there that then creates a circle to come further down. Now those ones I add the beads to for definite, but then these single ones here, you can choose to add a bead or not. But for this one, I'm just going to follow the shape like I said. So that means I'm just going to basically keep coiling around this base wire. And it's just coming down. I'm wrapping now underneath that crossover point. So it becomes still more or less seamless. So we still keep that circle shape, but we're going to avoid having any bare base wire showing. So that's all I'm going to do, follow all the way around there, including where the, it crosses over on top of it. And the next one that I've reached there is then a leaf. So what you just want to do is continue going like this. But what we also have to pay attention to, obviously, is the shape of this piece. Because obviously we need this piece here to follow the shape of the cabochon. So I'm just going to bring that in again. And what you can do is keep referencing this. So just bring it around. Obviously this starts at the top there. So place it there. Because what we want to make sure to do is not just have kind of a long straight piece. You can still maneuver it around, but I prefer to kind of do it a little bit as we go with the weaving wire, because that's going to help secure things in place and fasten things. And it can help kind of tighten the shape in place. So put it down there, see if it fits nicely. And then here obviously it's going to start curving. So that might mean that the top part of this piece that we've done needs to come a little bit either closer to each other. Make sure to, when you connect with the weaving wire, wherever you're connecting it, make sure you kind of pull it tighter and then down on the bottom, it might need to be a little bit more open. So it fits with a shape all the way around because I prefer to try and get the shape as much in order as I can as I'm doing this. It's not too crucial because we still adjust it a little bit once we've gone all the way around, but preferably get it as much in place as you can now. 
And also I just want to mention, regarding all the little ends of the weaving wire, obviously that I'm leaving towards the back there, what you can do is leave them and just continue working all the way to the end and then go and get rid of them after you've gone through the whole piece. Or you can do it along the way, that's completely up to you and your personal preference. So obviously, if you want to kind of get rid of them, because they can be a little bit messy as you're working with them, then do that or just cut them all off at the end. And I just do that in the exact same way as I show you on that leaf. So you just cut off so you have a tiny little end and then you squeeze down with your pliers and make sure you just roll it a bit in the direction that it's going. And that's the way to get rid of all of those little tails. So just keep working here all the way to the other end, add in your beads, do your weaving, and then we need to do the next step after that. So I then work my way all the way to the other end and you can see there, the two ends meet up nicely. And just to show you what it looks like with the cavachon in, it's gonna sit nicely along the edges of it and meet up at the top there. Obviously we need to connect it still, but it's gonna capture the cavachon nicely from the front and give this really nice filigree organic look to it. And obviously adding those beads in for the extra color. So that's what it's gonna look like. So now what we need to do is actually attach these wires at the top so it becomes one piece and we'll be able to capture the cabochon but also to start making the bale. So I'm then just going to get a pair of chain nose pliers ready here because we need to make some bends in the wire. So I have my piece and don't worry too much about it holding the perfect shape during this because we can always reshape it and obviously we're going to put the cabochon into it and it's going to naturally kind of shape around that in case it does go a little bit out of shape. Obviously make sure you don't get a big bend in it or open it up too much but it doesn't have to have the perfect rounded oval shape if that's the cabochon that you're using. Then what I'm going to do is make bends in these two ends of the wire, but one at a time. And we're basically, right now they're crossing over when they meet up like that. What I'm going to do is put a bend right down where I want the bale to start, and then bring it back out to the same side where it's coming from. So we'll get a bend in there. I'm just going to push it back. You can see, and the same thing with the wire on the other side. So basically the aim is just to get them to go back out in the direction where they're coming from. So that when they meet back up, we want to open them up enough so we get almost a little V-shape. And they start to go away from each other, like that. And then we can always obviously adjust it a bit more. So you just want to make sure you put the bends in there, in the wire. Because then we're going to use these lengths to then create the bale with. These are going to be the base wires for the bale. So we're going to also need to get in some more 0.4 mil weaving wire again. So I then grab my 0.4 mil wire here, but I'm leaving this attached to the reel just because it can be a bit hard to know exactly how much we're going to need for the bale. So that way, we're not going to be wasting too much or run out of wire along the way. So then I bring in my piece again. And we'll first of all need to attach this weaving wire to one of the base wires. So I'm just going to attach it right down where the bend is on one of them. Just leave a short little tail that you can hold on to. So I'm just bringing it around that base wire there. Wrap it around a couple of times. And then that's how we attach it. Just need to get my wires in order. Bring it around. And then it's attached. And then what we're going to need to do is start with the figure of eight weave to basically fill in the bail. Because obviously we also just need to connect the two sides together. Let's get that tail a little bit out of the way. I wrapped around this base wire twice. So what I need to do now, instead of going around the same one again, I'm going to swap over. It's coming around and down through the middle. Then I'm going to swap right over to the other one. Go underneath that. And then I'm making sure now that I basically have the distance between my two wires or the ends there that I want, how close I want them to be the very base of the bale here. Then I'm going to wrap around the other base wire and again push it right down to where the bend is so you can't push your 
weaving wire any further down and wrap that around that one twice as well all the way down and basically once you've done that just want to tighten up the wraps nicely once you've done that the two sides are now connected and you can let go and you can see it won't come undone apart from each other you can still slide the wrapping wire up and down the base wires obviously you're going to be holding it in place and it's just for now just want to tighten it up just a little bit more and then you're going down between the two base wires and I'm going to swap over to the other side again because this is the nature of the figure of eight weave we're swapping from side to side Now wrap around this side again, and every time you wrap around there, push it as far down as it'll go. And then once more. So I'm making sure to wrap around twice on each base wire. Like that. And then back to the other side again. And what you also want to make sure of is that your base wires here are at the angle that you want your bail to be. So I have my base wires coming out a bit away from each other, gradually more and more at an angle like that, because I want my bale to kind of grow larger towards the top. And I'm going to be working my way towards the middle of the bale, continuing this figure of eight weave going from side to side, and basically, as you can see, fill it in, the gap that we have between the base wires. So now I've reached the point that's going to be the middle of the bale. So what I want to do is make sure that that's the widest part. So what that means now is I need to bring these base wires closer to each other again so they can start going closer gradually towards each other. How I'm going to do that is take my chain nose pliers and we need to put a bend right after the very last wraps there on both sides. So just make sure that the weave is pushed all the way down and your base wires are pulled all the way out so we don't have any spare base wire down there so for instance like this you don't want your wire like that when we need to bend those base wires because obviously that will be out of balance then so make sure it's pushed all the way through and then I want to put my chain nose pliers right after the last wrap on one side at a time and then just put a bend into it that's going to then bring the base wires there closer towards each other again and so you can just see them start to overlap there at the top and just do it so it's about the same distance before they meet as it would be in that first half of it now what we need to do now then is obviously keep weaving because we need to also fill in this space there and finish the bale so to do that we use the exact same technique but we have to just work with it a little bit differently because what you'll find is when you're wrapping with wire like this on top of base wires the wraps that you're making with the weaving wire, it wants to slip down towards a narrow point. So that means when I continue now, the narrow point is going to be where we're heading, so away from us. So if I just continue wrapping here, the same technique as before, so that figure of eight weave, go twice around this base wire again. And then move to the other side and then you can see it instantly there that if I just bring the wire over whereas before it naturally kind of went closer and tighter together if I just bring this over this wrap now that I just did is wanting to slip down towards the point there and away from the other wraps which obviously we don't want we want that to stay nice and close so it still becomes a tight weave that we're making so what I'm going to do to counteract that is I'm going to then move to the other side like I said, in the same technique, but as I'm wrapping around the opposite side then, what we need to do is make sure that the wrap that we just did previously is going to stay pushed down. So I like to put my finger behind it, and you can even use your nail if you have any. And then while I wrap around the other side, I make sure that the previous wrap is pushed down. And obviously, do it once more. And also make sure that those wraps become nice and tight. 
and then just keep making sure you push the wraps down there. So that's that side and then same principle, we need to move back to the opposite side again. So we're crossing back and forth. So that means as I bring this over, just make sure to push the wrap that we just did down while you then start to wrap around the opposite side. And that's how I find is the best way to wrap when you're wrapping around base wires that's going to a narrow point like this to avoid the wraps there slipping down like they would naturally want to do. So you just keep doing this until you reach the point where they meet and obviously we have the full length of the bale. So now I made the full length of the bale, you can see it's kind of narrowing in again. And then just to show you what it looks like with the cabochon in. And also you can see it's holding together much better now because obviously we have weaved the full bale so you can't really pull the base wires through the weave anymore either because we have that bend in there. That's kind of a stopper. So it's going to sit nicely like that. So obviously what we need to do now is actually just shape the bale because we need these ends to come back down towards the cabochon. So to do that we need a bit of a mandrel. So I'm just using this crochet hook here. I find them really handy having a set of this and you've got different size mandrels. But obviously you can use whatever mandrel you want to. And then the first thing I just want to do before shaping the bale around the mandrel is I actually just want to push it forward a bit. So if you're looking from the side there, you can see it's pretty straight up right now. So I want to push it forward. Just a bit like that. And then I'm going to place the mandrel behind the bale there at about the midpoint. Then you want to start bending what sticks above around the back. So the ends here of the two base wires come straight down and meet up with the very beginning of the bale there on the back. So just like that. And you can see we have that little loop, you could say that's the bale. And because we pushed it forward it's going to sit nicely when we then also obviously put whatever kind of chain into it that we want to. So pushing it forward just helps making it sit nicely. And then we have these two ends of the base wire sticking out from the very end of the bale towards the back of the piece. So what we're going to do now is also work on the back because obviously right now we have the cabbage and rollers captured at the front but the back is completely open still so we need to make sure that's also going to be secure. So what I'm then just going to do as well is cut off the excess of this weaving wire because like I said we made the bale now so I want to cut also I have about a meter left or so because we're going to still use that to also attach the bottom of the bale there because right now you can see it's still open so we actually need to fasten this in place. So to do that I'm just going to take the rest of the weaving wire here and it's naturally coming out on one side we made the last wrap at the end of the bale. Then I'm going to bring that around the front of the bale, just around kind of the front of the side there and then I'm just going to bring it through the piece so far and then take the whole tail through and then just pull it so if you can as well bring this wire in between whatever wraps that we already have there so it just blends in nicely Then it's coming out to the back again I'm then going to bring it up between the two base wires on the back so we can then just go to the other side and do the same thing I'm just going to bring it around that wire and then through the piece Again, so everything blends in the best possible way. And then on the other side, I'm just going to do the same. So come around the front and then bring that around. So you can see that wraps around towards the front of the bale as well, but on the other side. And that's basically attaching it in place. You can do this a couple of times if you feel the need to. And if you have the space to obviously put this weaving wire somewhere. But that's now basically attached. So you can see we can't just open that bottom part of the bale anymore. So it's now nice and secure. So then to capture it on the back here, what I'm going to do is use these two lengths I have left of the base wire. And I'm basically going to do what we did along the edge, but obviously just kind of working it so it's all going to fit together. So you just want to use these two. I'm going to open them up a bit, separate them out. So we're going to use one of them in one direction and one in the other direction. And then you want to basically start making the exact same 
kind of design that I've done along the edge, also to make it match nicely. So again, it really doesn't matter how you start, it's personal preference and what's gonna end up coming naturally. I'm just gonna kind of show you how to get started. Focus on one at a time. I place my six step bell making pliers in to get the initial loop, bring it all the way around and then I just change position here. So I get a complete circle. So that's the first little organic part. And then after that, you can make a little curve or you can make a leaf. I think after this here, I'm gonna wanna make a leaf. So I'm gonna bend just like before for the bottom part of the leaf bend the wire back and then put a curve into it. So you can see that's the first half of the leaf really. Until we then get to the point. And then what we just wanna make sure to do as we're making this is you wanna make points on this part on the back that's gonna be connection points to the front. So that's what this leaf for instance is gonna be. I'm gonna just make the point of the leaf Bend the wire against it, against the pliers. So you can see we get a point there, and obviously you then bring the wire around to make the other half of the leaf. But then you can see that that point there is going to meet up nicely with that part of the front design. So what happens then is when we're going to go through with the weaving wire, and again the exact same thing, occasionally you want to then make sure to kind of capture the back and the front part together. So that will be a connection point. So it just means whenever you use the weaving wire and wrapping it around in the same way as around the edge, you just wanna make sure you wrap basically the figure of eight weave once or twice on those connection points. And obviously you work your way around and also do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna work our way around and end up having the two wires meet up down here. And remember obviously as well, at some point along the way, you're gonna to need to put in the capuchin. So it's gonna be captured because if you make the whole piece, you won't really be able to put the cabochon in. So you have to do that along the way once you feel like you kind of, the last point where you can get it in. So it's really just doing this all the way along. One of the weaving wires here, the one I've got left you can use. You can just attach new weaving wire like we did throughout this piece anyway. So it's just kind of making what we've already done. So I now completed the back as well, and that means the cabochon is now completely captured within the frame. So what I've done is, like I said, I worked my way all the way down on both sides and then met right there in the middle. And then when you finish it off, say with a loop or however you choose to finish it off, it blends in nicer still. So you don't really notice that there is a little connection point there. So that's what it looks like. And then the front looks like how we made it initially. So you have all this nice filigree looking organic wire work going all the way around and then I just added those beads in there for some extra color and that's what it looks like and then we have the bail where obviously all you got to do now is attach a chain to this and then you can wear it so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial I have loads of other tutorials for how to capture cabochons in different ways both using wire work but also other mediums so please feel free to check that out otherwise thank you very much for watching